Ship's Fishing Adventures, brought to you in part by Rainbow Taxidermy, for all your taxidermy needs. Scott Brothers Fishing Company, bait suppliers to the caribou fishermen. This week, we're concentrating on Region 7, the Almanica Peace Region in the province of British Columbia. Based on the Chaco Lodge on New Stub Lake, we'll be fishing with guides to follow Amadio of Rainbow Taxidermy. Together, we'll challenge the great outdoors with fly rods and light spinning tackle as we travel to a couple of local lakes and then fly to a few pristine locations. So hang on as we whisk away to another adventure from the Chaco Lodge. To a fisherman, the idea of catching a hard-fighting wild rainbow with light tackle in a totally secluded area where wildlife and man can merge is thought only to be possible in the pages of a fishing journal. Not so, as this week I travel with fishing guides to Fano Amadio from Vanderhoof, British Columbia to the nearby home of Joseph and Elizabeth Dorig, proprietors of the Nachaco Lodge. A one-hour drive southwest of Vanderhoof on Good Gravel Road brings you to the Kenny Dam and New Stub Lake, and that's where our adventure begins. You can imagine what went through our minds seeing that tremendous skyline and knowing that we would soon be fishing there. Immediately upon arrival, Joseph was quite anxious to get underway. So after giving the plane its pre-trip inspection and showing us the safety features, we were given the green light for departure. As it was nearing dinner time, Joseph decided to take us about 20 minutes from the lodge to a nearby lake. After a smooth takeoff and informative flight, we were flying high and taking in some of the sights that BC's caribou has to offer. an abundance of lakes, large and small, were at our disposal as Joseph flew us over many areas that the average person would have considered inaccessible. To guide Stefano, this was probably all in a day's work, but it was thrilling for me. Boy, if that's not a good sign or what, there's fish here. As we quickly unloaded, we made use of the 12-foot aluminum boat that Joseph had stored for client use. He leaves us now for 45 minutes of non-stop fishing. That counts, but anyway. Doesn't count? Hey, we can start counting now if you want. <laughs> oh, yes! Whoa! <laughs> double header! <laughs> All right. Double header. I would think it's going to be a nice video. Oh, man. Oh, look at this guy. And that's whoa, about whoa, the whoa. average size for this lake. <laughs> and he's stealing the show. Yeah, that's some nice fish, all right. Well, the bugs aren't too bad yet, at least. Oh, right on. 
Well, that's about four or five fish in, a, in about five minutes. That's you know, one, one and a half, two pound average. See me? Whoa, another one. <laughs> Woohoo! One after the other, eh? <laughs> right there. Wow. You see the fish in there? Well, that was a nice size, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Right there, right? Eh? I appreciate that. You know, I'll, I'll probably join you here in a few minutes. I'm just going to get my fill here first. Well, you want to join you. So I can catch you up. I can catch up. Wow. Okay. Whew. Amazing. It's, uh, he, he, Stefano told me, too, one fish right after the other, cast by cast, and he sure wasn't lying. And you know, Ooh. fishermen, when you get to some of these remote areas, it definitely pays to get a guy that knows where he's going and knows exactly what to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was very generous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Get yourself wrapped on that boat anchor, you'll be whistling. Nice fish. This guy's got some poop. Drop that lure right in the offshore, and he hit it right away. That's a nice size fish too. Right here again, there it is. Pop, boom! Does he get it? Boy, they're holding right in here, right? Eh? Yes, yeah! Oh, oh bad. I'll bet you know, I was going to say, Stefano, we get around this point here, I bet you it's going to be dynamite bigger fish. I'll bet you. Start stripping line off here. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that. I got robbed. Nice and red, eh? Yeah, I'll take my fish back now anytime. Right in there. There. That's him. Yeah. Oh, good runner. They seem to be holding the trout here in a small ledge offshore. There's a lot of gravel around the area a good 15 feet from the bank and a lot of the fish are kind of congregating here after the spawn. There's a nice silver duck nest in there. Yeah. Or a silver doe, I should say. A lot of the fish are congregating around the gravel right now and they're just hungry to eat about anything. Flies, spinners, spoons, plugs, you name it. They'll eat anything. Great fishing. Wow, look at that. Well, there's Joseph with our lift. He sure looks like spinning tackle outfished a fly rod this time, but I think Stefano was just being easy on me. When we return, it's about time we found out what the Nachaco Lodge is all about. We'll be right back. This week, with the assistance of guide Stefano Amadio and the cooperation of Joseph and Elizabeth Dorig, we focus on the Nachaco Lodge. Nestled on the edge of New Stub Lake, the Dorigs have devoted themselves to quality pioneer-style living, and keeping guests happy is their main objective. For the outdoor type, who like to rough it a bit, they have four basic log cabins.
The cabins are all neatly tucked away close to the main lodge. Should you decide to cook, the cabins have most facilities that will enable you to maintain the privacy of your stay. All have wood-burning stoves with plenty of firewood on hand for those chilly nights. In the main lodge, a warming fire can be lit any time for your comfort and is situated in the same room where your business retreats and seminars can be held. Hey, it's spacious. Souvenirs, hats, and fishing tackle are here for the choosing, and float tube rentals is a must for fishermen. The lodge also gives a 5% discount for catch and release. Meals at the lodge are very flexible. Elizabeth cooks a Swiss-Canadian cuisine, and yes, they are licensed. Upstairs in the main lodge, things are a little like home. Two and three beds per room are available. Bathrooms and showers are just down the hall for your convenience. Hey, how's that for a sweet view that can't be beat? Joseph's favorite task around the lodge, and he has many, is to charter his clients at very reasonable rates in his float plane to some awesome remote areas. And hey folks, this man can fly. He's very safety conscious, and flying with him made me very comfortable. At the wharf, Elizabeth assists in every takeoff. And no kidding folks, his loving wife is their dockside on every return. Never mind the fishing, you could never fish all the lakes he could take you to. But some of the scenic flights are quite breathtaking. That's a fire watch station way up there all by itself. Rangers get dropped in by helicopter and can get a bird's eye view of any forest fire that may develop. The Cheslata Falls is the mouth of the Nachaco River, another close by place to fish from shore or by floating downstream. Wildlife here are in abundance. Here's some moose near the paved portion of the road on the way to the lodge. That's a bunch of black bears and one being cinnamon that were hanging around one gentle area close to the lodge. Sharp-eyed observers can spot game on almost every outing, and who could mistake the sound of the loon? For your outdoor experience, they offer fishing, boating, canoeing, hiking, trail rides, or just nature watching. Choose the Nachaco Lodge a first-class experience. Hey, coming up, Stefano and I tackle a little bit of a mud hole en route to one of the local lakes near the lodge. Fly fishing with chronomids is on the agenda when Scud Brothers Fishing Adventures returns after this. Scud Brothers Fishing Adventures is sponsored in part by Rainbow Taxidermy for all your taxidermy needs. And by Scud Brothers Fishing Company, bait suppliers to the caribou fishermen. Well, here we go again, off just after the crack of dawn. Stefano has decided to take me to one of his favorite spots where he brings a lot of his clients from the lodge. Why is it that fishing, as fun as it is, can get messy and miserable and not be as much fun as some folks may think? Here we are picking our way through the hole that Stefano says shouldn't be too bad. Mmm. -hmm. 
It's places like this, if you get stuck, the fishing day could be over. Phew, there's the lake. We made her. You can see we finally made it in, and man, that was sure a hole, eh? Yes. Holy yes, smokes. Yes. You said you were here about a week ago, and it wasn't that bad, eh? Oh, no, not at all. It was quite easy, actually. Well, this goes to show you that, you know, when you get in some of these remote places, like I've mentioned before, you've got to be sure to have the right equipment, and for sure we had a winch. We didn't need it, but it was sure good to have. So, I guess this morning, uh, condiments. Maybe, maybe kidonomits. We don't see any rice now in the lake, so we probably try black leech or something black like leech. this. Mm -hmm. Try to fish a little bit deep. Very small lake, but uh, got some sizable fish here. Apparently, there's uh, lots of 10 pounders, and at five pounds is about an average fish. Let's see what we do. Let's see. It's a beautiful day. Oh, yeah, it's serious. It's gorgeous. And you know, we had a little bit of fog this morning, but uh, it's subsided now, and uh, the sun's out. It's probably only what, quarter of seven or 6 30? 7 30. 7 30 already, eh? Jesus, the time has really passed quite fast. <laughs> Let's get out there. With the gear ready to go, and specific flies chosen, we assault the lake with Stefano's rubber raft, a perfect choice for tough launching situations. Here, Brad gets into his job for water level viewing of the fish. Okay, just let me get set up here. Yep. Ah, no problem. Should be good, then. Eh? Oh, yeah. Once again, fishing out of this Nachaco Lodge, there's just so many lakes here, that'll keep any angler more than happy. This is just great. The lily, the lily pads seem to be holding a lot of fish here. We're at the far end of the lake now, and uh, oh yeah, nice fish, you can see them, right? Whoa! Let me get this hardware in your way here. On the other side, just watch your feet there, bud. Okay. Yeah, looks a decent fish. One of the masters, but well, oh yeah, nice male. Really but. nice male. Really but. nice male. <laughs> no complaints. Well, I'm gonna get the net ready for you. And we'll just I can get the net out. bad situation right there, stuck in the lily pad. You know, we've only fishing with about four or six pound leaders on the lines, and around the lily pad, you know, it's a little bit of a problem because the fish goes around the pad, the line bites into the pad and catches really good. Which, oh, you got her free, eh? There he is. Still taking line, eh? Okay. I'm gonna find my chronomid, and uh, I guess I'll do the same thing. Oh, yeah, look at that fish, eh? There it is. Excellent fish, excellent fish. Sizable, nothing wrong with that. And there's your fly. Just barely in the mouth there. Mm -hmm. Just like the Okay. Yeah, right at the top of the mouth. Okay. Get out of it. Crown it again, eh? Ridiculous. Okay. Well, he's a little bit thin, he's dark. Oh, ho, ho, look at that, eh? Go we'll get another one. Go we'll get another it. one, yeah. Okay. Well, there he is. Beautiful rainbow trout. Straight out of the Nachaco Lodge. Great fishing. Let him go. There he goes. Right to the bottom, eh? Hey, welcome.
Welcome back to Scud Brothers Fishing Adventures. Obviously, fishing must be good for the kingfisher as he hovers around our fishing location. For the avid fly fishermen, fishing with chronomids can be pretty tricky. It's important to observe what the trout are taking. Sometimes it's obvious, but in other circumstances, during a hatch, more than one insect species may be present with a trout selecting only one. And sometimes, only at certain stages of the hatch, may a fisherman be successful. Not all rising fish are taking flies off the surface. Often, the trout's choice is nymphs that are on their way to hatch at the surface, and other times, they eat the stillborn nymphs who fail to hatch and are, so to speak, glued to the surface film. They may not be eating aquatic flies, but terrestrial insects. When a trout rises, it does this in a variety of ways, from a tiny kiss at the surface to a full thrashing splash. Capitalizing on these rises is not always easy. They demand special timing, varying from an instant reaction to a delay a second or more before striking. A trout taking in a chronomid requires an instant response, but no doubt that patience is the secret when attempting to set the hook. Identifying how the fish rises is important. Generally, when the head is seen servicing, Fish are top water feeding, but only when the dorsal fin is showing on a rise, this signifies that fish are feeding on uprising hatches of chronomids. Let's get back fishing with Stefano Amadio of Rainbow Taxidermy from the Nachaco Lodge. Thing's heavy. Yes, it is. Okay, get that out of there. Alrighty. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Yeah, just lovely. Oh, nice, beautiful red markings on these males, eh? That's a nice fish. I'll let him fly. He's just about ready to go, I think, this guy. We'll see what happens here. Oh, yeah, he's ready. Okay. There he goes. Ah, right on. That's the game. Well, okay, where's it? This net's getting heavy. That's a nice fish, too, eh? Oh, yeah. Bad. Bad. Really That's nice. Good shot, eh? Bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, look at the sides of this fish. Oh, Pounds for oh, sure. Yes. Yeah, Maybe close to ten. A nice fish. Oh, what a beautiful fish this one. Okay. Beautiful, huh? Eh? Here we go. It's going to need some help. It's been hung up a little bit. Let me give it to you. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Oh. Nice fish. Lovely fish. Oh. Needs help, huh? Eh? Yeah. He's a beauty. Yeah, it's Almost willing ready. to go, willing to go. A little bit more, a little bit more. Not yet. Yes. There he goes. OK. <laughs> wow. Great fishing. That was in a Chaco Lodge. Whether you want to get away to fish, do some sightseeing, or just get away to simply relax, 
this is the place to be. For information on the trip, you can contact Joseph or Elizabeth Dorig at the number on the screen. Or you can contact Stefano Amadio of Rainbow Taxidermy out of Prince George. Fishermen, this is your playground. Let's respect it and keep it clean. And we'll see you again next week for another Scud Brothers Fishing Adventure.